Hi, it's Alex. I've been seeing a lot of discussion lately about the idea of raising the minimum wage. And the idea that I'm seeing being thrown around a lot is the idea of raising the minimum wage in the entire U.S. everywhere to $15 an hour. And I want to talk about whether or not I think this is a good idea. I think it's a little bit complex. I think that there are good and bad things about minimum wage. And I want to make sure that we, before we jump on board with the idea of being pro or anti, we kind of look at the pros and cons. And the one point I really want to drive, drive in in this video is that the effect of a minimum wage increase is very different in different areas and different types of communities. And I want to make a big contrast here. I want us to look separately at the effect of minimum wage on a high cost of living urban area like New York City, Boston, Washington DC, San Francisco, those types of areas, and the effect on a poor rural area. Because I think these are the two sort of extremes here. If you're looking at a high cost of living urban area, there's several things that I think come up. One of them is that in these areas it is very hard to get by on a low wage. Like think about how expensive rent is in a place like New York City. It's absolutely sky high. And not just New York, all the major cities in the US. They're all pretty expensive places to live, some more than others. But it's not just rent that's expensive, it's everything. I lived in Philly for a while. Philly is not the most expensive city, but even there, food there was more expensive. And there are all these little hidden costs. Like if you have a car, you have to pay for parking all the time. There are toll bridges here and there. Uh, there are all sorts of little things that eat up your money and make it cost more to just live your life. And this is also true of businesses. So businesses are having to pay higher rent too. So when you raise the minimum wage, what happens? Well, for one, it forces businesses to pay more money. And so people who are really struggling to make ends meet on these low wage jobs suddenly have a little bit of an easier time. Now from the business's perspective, what happens? Well, in these high cost of living areas, the business is probably having all sorts of other costs that are quite high besides just wages. They're probably paying a lot for renting a storefront or renting an office, things like that. So the portion of their costs that is taken up in wages is a little bit smaller than in areas with a low cost of living. So businesses are probably not going to be driven, driven out of business in these urban areas if they're forced to pay more in min minimum wage. So you have like a high benefit and a low cost to this policy. But what happens if you're in a poor rural area? For example, most of West Virginia or rural Ohio, places like that. A lot of these areas, it's really, really cheap to live there. But the economy is also really weak. Jobs are often very hard to come by. But rent is cheap and pretty much everything is a little bit cheaper there. So just to give you an idea of how cheap rent can be, when I graduated college, uh, I moved into Cleveland, and Cleveland is not the most expensive city. It's a pretty cheap city to live in. But even there, you look at apartments, one bedroom apartment might cost $500 to $600 a month. Well, if you go out into rural Ohio for $600 a month, you could rent an entire farmhouse with four or five bedrooms, two bathrooms, a huge yard which you could garden in. So. The, the cost of rent was three to four times higher in the city. Um, and, and food is cheaper, and also you can garden more easily. In, in a city, there are a lot of people who can't, they just don't have the option to garden at all unless they want to grow a few plants indoors. So there are all these different ways in which the cost of living can be lower in these rural areas and where you can get by on less. So. If you're a minimum wage worker in these poor rural areas, you're kind of lucky to have a job at all, but you're more able to get by if you do have a job. And 
At the same time, jobs can be very, very hard to come by. Like, some of these areas have very high unemployment rates, and there are not all that many businesses, and because the economy is so weak, it's hard for businesses to survive. So what happens when you raise the minimum wage in one of these poor rural areas? Well, first of all, the wages are often a higher portion of the costs of these businesses. And part of the reason is that rent is so cheap. It's not just cheap for individuals, it's also cheap for businesses. And part of that is also that there are a lot of people who own land. Like, I saw this a lot in my home county of Lancaster County. There are a lot of Amish and Mennonite people, and a lot of these people never take out mortgages. They just own the land, and the land gets passed on generation to generation. And this helps co keep the cost of living down, because no one is having to pay on mortgages. So there are all these different ways and different reasons that these rural areas can have lower costs of living. But a lot of them make it so that the portion of a business's cost that is paid out in wages is higher. So if you have a minimum wage increase, that hurts businesses in these poor rural areas more proportionately relative to these high cost of living urban areas. So there are probably more businesses that are going to be driven out of business in these rural areas if you raise the minimum wage than there are in these urban areas. Also, think about the effect of a business closing. In a city with a high cost of living, there are so many different businesses, and businesses are opening and closing all the time. And the economy is thriving, so if one business closes, there's an opportunity for another business to move in. In a poor rural area, this is not at all the case. Often, because the economy is so weak, if a business closes, that's it. Nothing reopens. And that can be devastating for people who live in that area, because the population density is low, so you might have to drive 20 or 30 miles to get to the next business of that type that just closed. And this is hugely problematic when it's basic stuff, like an auto mechanic, grocery store, any sort of retail store, any sort of service, if one of those closes and you have to drive a long way to get to the next one, that's really inconvenient. It makes the area a lot less livable. So, when I see minimum wage being discussed, I notice a huge disparity in support for the idea between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats tend to be really gung-ho on the idea, and Republicans tend to be opposed to it. And I think that part of the reason for this disparity in views has to do with the disparity of effect on these different areas, and the fact that cities with high costs of living tend to be mostly Democratic in the voter base, whereas these poor rural areas tend to be mostly Republican, at least nowadays. One thing that I really don't like about the stance in the Democratic Party right now is that a lot of people are pushing the idea of a universal $15 federal minimum wage, just across the board. And to me, it's, it's obvious that it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have the same wages in a place like New York City or San Francisco or Boston as in an area like rural Ohio or West Virginia. Like, it seems crazy to me. And the fact that some liberals are pushing this idea it seems a little antagonistic to me. Like, it seems like you're sort of sticking it to the Republicans, saying like, oh, screw you, we're going to enact a policy that benefits us, that benefits our voter base at the expense of you guys, like, because no one cares about you. That's a little bit how it comes across to me. Now, in Biden's recent inauguration address, he made this really great, grandiose speech about wanting to represent all Americans, and wanting to work together, and blah blah blah, and I think these are great ideals. I fully support this. But I think that if the Democratic Party really wants to be perceived as sincere, really, really living out those words, they really need to consider Republicans in their policy, and consider the effects that their policy might have. And I think minimum wage is a great example of this, that like when people are pushing this universal $15 minimum wage with this 
idea of like, oh, this is great for everyone, we're trying to help you, we're trying to help everyone, and you're not considering the disparity of the effects on these different areas in, in your policy, that comes across as really arrogant and really condescending. Like, it comes across as like, oh, I know better than you, so I can force this policy on you because it's for your own good. It's like, to me, it's obvious we need a little bit more nuance here. We need people to listen to these people in the rural areas who are opposing the minimum wage and saying, hey, maybe these people have a legitimate concern. Maybe having the minimum wage be the same everywhere is not a good idea. Um, it seems common sense to me, and yet a lot of liberals and a lot of Democrats that I talk to seem to think that $15 universal minimum wage is a great idea. So that's what I have to say. Uh, I especially hope that this video has gotten through to you if you were one of those people. I hope I've made you think about it a little bit and think, okay, maybe there's a little bit more to it than this. You know, maybe, maybe we could be more respectful of Republicans, more understanding of the constraints faced by most of the Republican base. I know. That's what I have to say today. I hope this has been illuminating, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye!